to Talking Technique No Trouble, this is Ari, today with an episode on the right hand. Now, I wanted to create an exercise that really forces me, first of all, to string jump a whole lot. Great shedding for the right hand, great shedding for the left hand. So I wanted to force myself to <laughs> really come up with a pattern that's just as complicated as possible and also one that forces me to sometimes go against the grain. And in these cases, I would most likely do it because this against the grain is only for a couple of beats. And to just reset myself might not, in the heat of the moment or when I'm side reading or something like that, might not uh, work out. So here is my exercise. I've played it for you in the intro. And while you could come up with several variations for this exercise that will probably work, I want to encourage you to just do a round of index middle throughout. So you are completely uh, alternating and playing a different finger on every single note. I work this out so that when you play the repeat, you come back around on top and you will be starting with the other finger. So ideally, you will get index, index starting as well as middle starting without missing a beat. You can always check yourself. If you look at the beginning of the bar, it says MRI. Uh, you don't have to like be staring at this MI, MI, MI uh, sequence. But if you are not sure, you can stop, check yourself. Did I just... Was I with the, was I with the program or was, did something happen? So you can check yourself fairly easily. So I want to very briefly go through this piece and show you a couple of key spots and what I was thinking as I was coming up with it. So I'm starting it with the middle finger. Either starting finger is fine. We all have our favorite finger. Um, ideally, you could do it both ways. And if you repeat it and you never make a mistake, then you'll start with the opposite finger on your second run through. Um, so I'm starting here with the middle finger and there's this figure that is basically a pedaling idea and immediately it turns around middle index middle and then it turns around where the index is the lower finger uh, index middle index middle index middle index middle and then it resets again now here is the exact opposite of the first bar it's the same tonal material but the first bar I started with the index and came out in a certain pattern with index and middle and now here in the second bar I have the exact same notes but the uh, fingering is reversed. So I'm really hitting this from all angles. Then I do in essence the same figure, but I have a string in between. That's of course an additional challenge, um, but same idea. So I'm skipping and one, sometimes I have these octaves with the index finger being the lower finger and it being with the grain of the hand. Sometimes it goes the grains the grain of the hand. So it's just a really, you know, what, how hard can one possibly make this, you know? And we're practicing that between the upper two strings. And then we go change the rhythm a little bit. There's a slight variation in the bar where it goes to the five chord and then the four four chord beats three and four at first it goes at first we're doing b flat to the c and then we're doing b flat to the b there's a slight variation don't miss that accidental there and then the same thing again on the four chord back to uh, this familiar uh, to a similar figure as in the beginning but then it gets a little even hairier because now I'm pedaling against the higher string for just a second and then here again against the grain again 
for this run through. But when I repeat it, it will then be exactly the opposite. So I just tried to come up with as many challenging ways to permutate index middle, what the left hand does, what I'm pedaling towards and make it switch as quickly and as often as possible. top again with the middle finger then you know after doing it twice then you know that you at least started with the right foot but um, you want to constantly check yourself as you're going through it and periodically check am I still on the right one so as I was playing through this I noticed that I wanted to reset quite a bit my hand wanted to line itself up so that it goes with the grain that said, it's a really good exercise to just force myself to alternate throughout. It's a certain feeling in the hand that I uh, sense and um, it's it feels really relaxing to me if I can, if I don't have to think about it and can just alternate. You want to minimize motion. If you want to get any kind of tempo going on this, you want to not do this. You know, I see a lot of people you know, when they play octaves, do things like that. So the whole arm is moving back and forth. So it's I'm, 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 I'm tilting my hand a little more so I have a better angle to get at both of them rather than using my entire elbow. And especially you see that with people who don't rest on the, on the base body, they'll end up, you know, oftentimes just moving their entire arm and you can see just how much effort that takes and every time you make a lot of movement it creates an opportunity for timing to be not as accurate and for energy just getting lost you know so you want to set yourself up so that you have minimal motion and uh, effective angles and access to um, all of these strengths and so that's why I love this setup and my arm is resting there comfortably. <laughs> kick it up a notch what you could try is swing the 16th notes so straight swung much for watching i'm at arispaceblock.com make sure to go there and check out what we're up to we have courses out books out uh lots of course material to help you achieve your base goals we talk about practicing we talk about theory we talk about timing we talk about all sorts of things and there's a lot of free content as well so thank you very much for checking it out today and i'll see you next time